Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today we're going to talk about the complete blood count, also known as a CBC. And as always, whenever you get done watching this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this content. So let's get started. For exams and as a nurse, you want to be familiar with this CBC because it's a very popular test that is ordered on a patient. Almost every patient that walks through those hospital doors is going to have a CBC. And why is that? Well, this blood test tells us generally how healthy this patient is. It tells us if they have an infection, maybe they have a hemorrhage or they have anemia or they have some type of blood cancer. And we can look at the results and help determine that. Now, how do we collect a CBC? Well, we stick the patient's vein and withdraw the blood sample from that vein and it'll go into a tube and then we'll send it to the lab and the lab will run the complete blood count and then send you back the results. Now for the NCLEX exam and your nursing lecture exams, what you want to know about the CBC is that you want to know what it covers, what those things represent that it covers, and those normal lab ranges that each part should fall within. And I have a whole video on labs that you want to know for the NCLEX exam that comes with the quiz. So if you're about to take the NCLEX exam, you may want to check that video out. And whenever you are answering these questions on an exam, the lab results that they're going to throw out at you are going to be noticeably abnormal. It's not going to be something that falls so close to that low part or that high part within that normal range because labs really vary on what they consider normal. One lab may say a normal result is 12.5 to 20, while another one may say it's 15.5 to 20.5. So just know those ranges and know you're going to get something that you should be able to recognize if you already know the range that it's abnormal. And whenever you're working as a nurse and you're looking at that CBC result, you want to be able to identify, hey, if the platelet count is low, what's the patient at risk for? Or if this white blood count is high, what's going on with your patient? You want to be able to look at that. Also, whenever you get the results, which is pretty awesome, is that you'll have the result of the patient, but right beside of it will be the normal range of whatever that area should fall within, which is great because you already really need to know the normal range of white blood cells, red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and platelets, but the CBC can get a little bit deeper. For instance, if you have a CBC with a differential, it's going to tell you the specific percentage or absolute counts of the five types of white blood cells like the basophils, monocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes. And you want to be able to look at that and say, okay, what did a, what did a basophil do again? What did a lymphocyte do again? Because that will give you a clue possibly what's going on with your patient. Also, the CBC can tell you about the specifics about the red blood cell, like the red blood cell indices, which is going to go into depth about like the red blood cell size, the hemoglobin concentration and things like that, which we're going to cover in this video. So whenever you're done watching this video and you go and you look at your patient's CBC, hopefully you'll be able to tell what an MCV is or an MCHC is. And if you were to look at a CBC result in the hospital on your patient, it would look something similar to this. Over here on the left hand part, it says test name and has all those abbreviations of what is included. And this one is a CBC with a differential. So it looked really in depth at our white blood cell count. So you have WBCs, which is white blood cells, RBCs, which is red blood cell, and then HGB, which is hemoglobin and HCT, which is hematocrit, and then it goes in depth into the red blood cell indices, which is the mean corpuscular volume, and then you have the mean corpuscular hemoglobin, which is MCH, and then you have MCHC, which is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, and then we have RDW, which is the red blood cell distribution width, then we have PLT, which is platelet count. Then we have the MPV, which is the mean platelet volume. Then it's going to start going in to the different types of white blood cells. And we have neutrophil percentage and then the absolute neutrophil count, which is below that. And then LY with the percent sign is the lymphocytes and then the absolute lymphocyte count and then monocytes and then the absolute monocytes 
and then eosinophils, and then the absolute count of that, and then basophils, and then the absolute count of the basophil. And right beside of that, you have the patient's result. It gives you the units it was measured in, and then the normal lab range that I was talking about. So first, let's talk about the white blood cell count, WBCs. They play a huge role with infection. And depending on what's going on with the patient, we can look at the five different types of WBCs, and this can give us an idea of what may be causing the patient an issue. And a normal white blood cell count that you want to definitely remember is about 5 thousand to ten thousand and anything less than five thousand would be considered leukopenia this is where you have a drop in the white blood cell count now what can cause this well there's various things and some things that can cause it are like autoimmune conditions medications like chemotherapy drugs that suppress the immune system and even some mental health drugs along with severe illness like sepsis cancer hiv aids now, you can also have on the flip side where the white blood cell count is elevated. That is known as leukocytosis. And what can increase the white blood count, of course, is infection, along with leukemia, extreme stress, and medications. Now, let's look at these and talk about these five types of white blood cells. Now, depending on the cell, they have various roles, and I would be familiar with the role of what each does. So the first one is the basophil. It plays a role in the inflammatory response and allergy response. And below each, you can see the average percentages of what should be in the blood that can just help you be familiar with it. And then we have the eosinophil, and this plays a role in the allergy response, like with asthma and parasitic infections. Then we have the monocyte, which plays a role with fighting infection and those foreign substances that may invade our body. Then we have the neutrophil, which plays a role in bacterial infections. And then lastly, we have the lymphocyte, which plays a role with viral infections. Next, the red blood cells, the RBCs. These are sometimes referred to as erythrocytes or a really old term, red blood corpuscle. And the reason I want to include that term is because whenever we talk about the red blood cell, indices, we're going to be talking about the MCH, the MCHCs, and so forth, and that is the mean corpuscular volume or the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, and that's where that corpuscular word is coming from. We're talking about red blood cells, so hopefully that'll help you remember that. Now, a normal RBC count is 4.5 to 5.5 million. Now, if we have a low amount of RBCs, it's termed anemia. And there's various types of anemia, iron deficiency, we have pernicious anemia, so there's various causes. But we can look at that red blood cell indice and it can help the physician determine possibly what type of anemia is going on. In addition, other causes of anemia is acute blood loss hemorrhage. A high red blood cell account would be termed polycythemia, and a cause of that could be like a blood cancer where that bone marrow is producing too many red blood cells. Now also what they can read off of the red blood cell is the hemoglobin and the hematocrit because the role of your red blood cell is to transport oxygen throughout the body and replenish your tissues with it. Then it's going to carry back carbon dioxide to the lungs so the lungs can exhale it. So hemoglobin is that protein that is found on the red blood cell that carries the oxygen. And it is it's short for HGB. And it differs for men and women, and I would know these ranges. For men, it's 14 to 18 grams per deciliter. And for women, it's 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. Then we have the hematocrit, short is HCT, and this is the amount of red blood cells compared to the total blood volume. And again, it differs for male and female. So for men, it's about 42 to 52%, and notice this is a percentage. And for women, it's 37 to 47%. Then we have the red blood cell indices. And indices, that word is a plural form for index. And this is gonna tell us a little bit more about that red blood cell, specifically the size of the red blood cell 
and about that hemoglobin that is found on the red blood cell, which will help us determine if this patient has anemia and what type we are dealing with. So you will see a lab result on that CBC that says MCV. Again, that stands for mean corpuscular volume. This is the size of the red blood cell. And here in red, you can see the references for the normal ranges. Then we have the MCH. That stands for the mean corpuscular hemoglobin. This is the amount of hemoglobin that is in that red blood cell. Then we have the MCHC, that is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. And just as its name says, it's the concentration of hemoglobin in the red blood cell. And then we have the RDW. This is the red cell distribution width. And this is the amount of variation of the red blood cell size. And lastly, we have the platelets, which is abbreviated as PLT. And platelets play a huge role in clotting. We need those whenever we're bleeding to stop the bleeding. A normal platelet count is about 150,000 to 400,000. And whenever a patient has a low platelet count, it's termed thrombocytopenia. And whenever a patient has this, they're at risk for bleeding. Some things that can cause this are like a bone marrow issue, chemotherapy agents, and viral infections. A high platelet count is termed thrombocytosis, and there is a risk for clotting. And some things that can cause this are like leukemia, inflammatory diseases, or acute blood loss. And also on the CBC, you can see a MPV. This stands for mean platelet volume. And this is just measuring the average size of the platelets. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the complete blood count. And don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you over this content.